in uh, episode number two of Career Focus Fridays, uh, in a, an effort to uh, make some uh, worthwhile and uh, and uh, engaging engaging content available to our NBS eight year old members uh, now during the summer. So we're going to be doing uh, one of these each Friday uh, through May and and into the early summer and perhaps even later. Uh, depending on the availability of uh, the professionals uh, like um, the one we have with us today. Lee Halgan uh, is an award-winning film editor, more than 10 years of editing experience. He was awarded the first ever U.S. Dramatic Special Jury Award for Excellence in Editing at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival for the film Dope. Uh, he edited a number of other uh, feature films, and uh, his most recent uh, uh, or among his recent ones is Ad Astra, uh, starring Brad, Brad Pitt, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, uh, and others. Um, so uh, we're going to conduct this uh, as, uh, as a, a type of interview uh, to, yeah. to, to guide uh, what Lee is talking about, but uh, he's certainly free to go off on whatever tangents uh, he feels uh, would be useful to, to the students uh, uh, and professionals here with us today. And uh, and, and those who will be watching this uh, once it's posted on, on the website. First of all, Lee, if you could uh, describe for us uh, basically what it, what it is that you do in your job um, yeah. as, uh, as an editor. Editing editing is a pretty broad field, and certainly all of our students and faculty are very aware of, uh, of editing processes, but what, what exactly is that you do in your, in your job? Editing is, uh, it is the helm of the post-production process. It is um, where everything comes together, whether it's what they shoot, picture, sound, music, visual effects, um, everything comes together in one place in the editorial department. And that's kind of the fun part that really attracted me towards editing was that the film really does come to life at that point. And you can also, as they say, it's the last rewrite of the script is editing. And so um, after they shoot, you shoot what the script is based on and what you can afford or what you can make work at each location. And then it's up to the editor to piece it all together in, a, in, in, in the most comprehensive, the most impactful way possible to convey the feelings, emotions, the information um, to make the best movie or television show that you can. And uh, I've, I've worked mostly in features, but I've also dabbled in television as well. Um, so those processes are similar, but there are some differences between them. But um, the idea to, with features, you, you work directly with the director for a long period of time. And that is, is the most fun portion of the editing process for me, is you sit down, you look at all the footage, you try to make every scene the, the best scene possible that will also help impact the rest of the story along the way to make the cohesive whole of the film. That's good. Okay. Um, how do you get your jobs? Um, I, what, where, how, do you, how do you end up among those credits and, <laughs> in the projects that, uh, that you're working on? You know, uh, as far as editing goes and as far as what I've talked to with other people in every other department is there's no path. There's no easy way to, to say, you do this, this, and this, and you get to be an editor. Everybody has a different story, which is, which is great, which is fun, interesting. Uh, it can be frustrating at times, but it can also be beneficial at times. You, you get to have these amazing experiences that you may never have had um, without taking certain jobs or working with certain people. But uh, as far as getting to the place of being able to edit a, a large budget studio film, um, it, it, it took a lot of time, but it's a, it's a lot about who you know and who you work with and a lot of hard work. I've, uh, I've worked with James Gray, the director of Ed Astra, um, on my first feature that I ever worked on was uh, his, his film called Two Lovers, and I was the apprentice editor. So I started at the bottom, but I made enough uh, of an impact that I worked my way up outside of working with James Gray, that when the opportunity to came to work with James again on a movie called Lost City of Z, because his normal editor, his, his usual first editor, was not available to start the film, um, 
I was, he, re he remembered me, he remembered my work ethic, he remembered my talent of editing. And when um, the other John X read, he said, well, let's have Lee go to Northern Ireland. He'll do the dailies. He'll edit all the dailies during production. We'll come back to Los Angeles and we can all edit together. And James felt confident enough to, to give me that shot. And I worked extremely hard in, in Northern Ireland <laughs> and the entire time. Um, but my goal was to have the four hour editor's assembly done the day after they were done shooting when we got back to Los Angeles. And that's, and that's what I did. And it took a lot of long hours, but um, it was fun. And, and so then I, so then we had a great time working on Lost City of Z. And, and then once James did his next project at Astro with, with Brad Pitt, um, cause Brad's watched Lost City of Z. So this is a masterpiece I wanna do your next film. Um, we knew that there was a possibility that it would be a space film that James had mentioned and talked about. And I mean, it was just a pleasure and a joy to work on a project of that size and that scale with a budget, amazing actors, amazing directors, amazing cinematographers, amazing visual effects. Director. I mean, it was just like the top of the top sound department. It just was, we don't get that very often. And I mean, there are a lot of superhero movies and a lot of other movies, Marvel movies and big budget tent poles, but there are not a lot of, uh, say, art house or adult films in that budget range. And those are the ones that I really love to work on. And so to have that opportunity was absolutely fantastic. And, and you know, to get to that point, it's really, it really is just hard work and creating those relationships, no matter what, no matter what field you're going into and, and to just prove yourself and to to maintain those those networks and relationships that's how you get to the next level okay um if you were to uh think back uh to oh maybe when you're a student or just getting out into into the industry um can you talk about anything that about the work that you're doing that uh, perhaps isn't known to students something that would be surprising something something that uh, that you discovered that you had uh, no idea was involved as part of your job <laughs> yes uh, there's, a, there's a couple of aspects when I was a student um, you know you always wanted to edit you wanted to edit you wanted to jump right into the editing chair and do that but in reality when you move out to Los Angeles if you have your student demo reel it's going to be very difficult to get an editing job a lot of times you got to start as a PA, you got to start at the bottom. And that goes for pretty much every, every uh, department. And the biggest thing is learning, not just being a PA, being a hard worker, but uh, I wish they would have had a class of assistant editing in college, because that is how you get to the next level that's right below the editor. And it has very little to do with editing. That job, it's, it's hard because that job doesn't prepare you to be an editor. It's, um, it prepares you how the workflow goes, how the structure goes, how, how to organize projects, how to media manage. It, it does a lot of technical things. It's an extremely technical job right now because of the technology and, and, and the age we are in. Uh, before it used to be, you used to have three or four assistant editors in the film days and they would, they would work on the reels and prep the reels and, and, and you still didn't learn how to edit. You don't actually learn how to edit as an assistant editor. So the biggest thing and the biggest lesson I learned um, after, I mean, that was the one thing I wish they would have taught me in college or I wish I would have known. So I had to learn that those, those features are looked into learning about what needs to be done as an assistant editor. So I could get one step ahead of everybody else. Um, Cause it, you always need to, you always need to sell yourself and you always need to get a little bit of an edge to say, I know how to do this. And then they'll, they'll give you the opportunity. Uh, but the biggest thing is whenever you are, whether you're, if you're a PA or assistant editor or apprentice editor, become very good at your job, become amazing at your job, and then work your way to get into the next room. With your time off, once you get your work done, ask the assistant, if you're a PA, ask the assistant editor, can I come and just watch you do your work? And most people are very happy to do that. They're, they're very happy to share this information. And the same way with the editor, if you're an assistant editor, ask if you can sit in while they're editing with the director. 
because the, the, the amount of information you learn, not just about editing, but about the politi politics that are involved in making a movie is priceless. I, I, had, I had the opportunity to work with um, an amazing mentor, John Axelrad, uh, on, a, on quite a few uh, numbers of films right now. And he, um, he gave me my first job as an apprentice on James Gray's Two Lovers. And he said, as long as you get your work done as, a, as an apprentice, you're welcome to just sit in the back of the room and just listen and watch what we do. And I took every single opportunity. I said, I sat in that back corner for hours, not saying a word, just observing. And just being able to watch how they interacted together, how the way they negotiated the, the different ways they were gonna make the edits, how it affected not only that scene, but three more scenes down the road and had to manipulate those scenes in order to make everything work. And then also the politics that are involved between the editor and the director. Um, and then also you get involved with the phone calls between the producers and the studios. And you get to hear, because everybody, it's, a, it's an extremely creative field, filmmaking, television, everything's creative. And everybody has different opinions because it's great that it's creative and it's great that it's a collaborative process. Uh, but you really have to know how to, to navigate those, those sometimes touchy waters because there are a lot of personalities and there are a lot of people but you know when when the goal is when you get the chance to work with all the uh, really kind nice people great people passionate people everybody has the same goal in mind let's make the best film or television show we can possible and and those are the people that you want to continue working with so i would say you know in summary i think that's kind of those are the things i would have loved to, that they don't teach you in college <laughs> yeah Okay, very good, thank you. Um, we're in a really different situation now. Uh, how is the, the coronavirus situation affecting your work, you, you, you personally and the people that you work with? Yeah, it's, you know, it's affected everything. I mean, the Hollywood pretty much shut down and, uh, or, adapt, or adapted. And that's the, the, the most interesting part of this unfortunate situation, obviously, this is terrible that, situation and hopefully we can find a remedy for this soon um, but or, or find a way to get back to work you know a little bit at least but um, no it's for me personally I um, I was just finishing up uh, an independent feature called Keyhole Garden uh, starring Zoe Saldana and um, I was fortunate enough to we had finished editing so in a way once we shut down it was okay because all these other departments, we were able to get everything from our home. My assistant editor uh, took, the, took a hard drive home with him, worked on his computer, and he was able to get the music department, the sound department, uh, visual effects, every department, um, all the material that they needed to work. And so that, you know, the, the composer writes from home right now because that's what we can do. And the visual effects, fortunately, visual effects can be worked on a lot from home anyway, from different departments that spread out around the world. Um, but sound is, sound is probably the toughest <laughs> because, uh, but he can work in a studio by himself. And so we are currently just everybody, all the departments are working and we're shooting for an end of May where we can kind of put everything back together. If things open up a little bit for us, we can have a couple of people in the same room and, and mix the final film. And, you know, we can check visual effects from home. We check, we listen to music from home. Um, everybody and we get on a bunch of phone calls kind of like this uh, but you know it's it's been challenging and I you know I've um, I have two little boys I have a three and a six year old so uh, with the schools closed I am also the teacher in the morning then I can do a lot of the the reviews and uh, approval processes in between things <laughs> but it's uh, you know it's, it's an adjustment for everybody but I think I've talked to a lot of other industry people, a lot of people in post-production, and some of the technology that's come out of this is, is going to shift the way we work, I have a feeling, in the future. Because they've come up with, they've had to, and I know people have been working on it. Um, I know Roger Barton has a, he's the editor, he's Michael Bay's editor, and I know he has a program and a system to be able to work remotely because he, he didn't want to travel everywhere, but he has a system that can pretty much real-time edit in a different room and Michael Bay can be somewhere on location and they can, with the internet being fast enough now and the media being enough to manage, we can edit anywhere. And um, 
I know people that are working on some of the bigger, some big budget movies right now, like they couldn't shut down. They have to keep going to try and make their dates. And so they are working from home, but they're using a program that um, it pretty much gives them remote access to their computer in the edit base. And so it's, it's, and they said the leg is very small, it's very minimal leg on it, because that was always a concern. But you can, you can, you just operate your computer that's in an edit base somewhere else with the computer that you have at home. And things like that and technology like that are gonna really shift how many people really need to go on location for shoots. I mean, editors and, and assistant editors, they used to send it on location uh, so you can be near production. But with technology like this, I think it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be cheaper to keep you home. And, and a lot of people I think will probably start working from home, especially, especially in, a, in, in television. Television I think is gonna benefit the most the editors. Um, because a lot of the times you are by yourself with television anyway, because the directors are off on location shooting the next episode or the other, every other episode of prepping for the next one. So usually you just get notes in an email or you have a phone call or a video call anyway. And the same way with the showrunner, the showrunner is always on set for when they're filming for TV shows. So you do just get a list of notes, you go through the notes and you can, you can, you address them. So I have a feeling a lot of editors might be like, well, can I just do this from home now? <laughs> we have the technology. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be an adjustment. And, you know, you always have to try and find the silver lining and light it light in, in these tough situations to, to, to make things better, maybe make things more efficient, maybe make things more affordable, um, and to, to, to just get, continue to work. That's what, that's what and create product and create passionate products that you want to do. Okay, well, um, at this point, I'd like to open it up to questions from our other uh, participants here on the, on the, the Zoom conversation um, to uh, see, see what else they would uh, like to talk with you about. Sure. Hi, Lee. Brandon here. Hey, Brandon. Um, so I'm a little newer to editing. Uh, I've had a lot more time to do it now that I am sitting in my room being creative as ever, you know. Uh, but I've only been doing like short projects and stuff because uh, it just feels very hard to do like all the shooting and all the editing all by yourself. So like, can you speak a little bit more about uh, the experience of working like side by side with somebody uh, while working on a project? Yeah, uh, side by side, you mean like with the director in the room? Yeah, or with, just yeah, like yeah. talk about the creative process a little bit more in depth. For sure, for sure. Uh, I, I always, I, that's, that's one thing with everybody working from home right now is, is what is missing. Uh, you, you don't get to have those brainstorms, those, those feeding off of each other. Uh, it's such a collaborative process. It really is filmmaking. And to be able to bounce ideas because one idea could lead to three other ideas that of somebody else. And um, you know, when you, when you work together as a group, you really are able to um, figure out and solve problems that you wouldn't be able to do by yourself. I, I've really enjoyed working. I've worked uh, with John X Reddit um, on the last three films and having to work, being able to work with another editor is, is just amazing because you can get into roadblocks when you're editing. It's kind of like writing blocks where you just, you're looking at the footage and you're like, why is this scene not working? And you just like, I cannot figure this out. And then you bring it in and you ask the other editor or your assistant editor or your PA to come in and watch it. And, and they'll watch it and they'll be like, oh, well, just go to, just go to the wide here. And then that's the, you know, it's just like, for some reason you, you, you get, you get blinds, you know, you get to the blinders on and you didn't see it. And that one key will open up the rest of the scene. And then it's, it's so much easier to edit. And, and getting to work with the director um, and to help them really deliver on what vision they wanted to create for the film uh, is probably the most rewarding because you, you do create a bond with that director. And um, I mean, you work closely with them for three months. We, we sit in the small room all together <laughs> for at least three months, if not more, and uh, sometimes two years. But it's, uh, it's, 
it's fun. It's fun as long as you're as long as you're working with people that you enjoy working with and creatively, uh, creatively are on the same page. Then it's just a fuel of like, how do we make this better? How do we make this better? And the only time you really stop editing, and most directors will tell you this, is when the money runs out and when the the release date comes up, because directors will and edit, directors will keep editing until until they somebody says stop. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Hello, Lee. It's Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Um, question. So since editing has become more of a, like, we're now staying at home and we're editing from our computers and stuff like that, how do you think it will affect um, those of us who'd like to become editors and going into the future if, like, coronavirus sticks around for a while? That is a great question. Um, the, the good news is, honestly, I think the editorial department will, will be one of the least affected departments because um, most of the time, at least on features, it's a small group of people, um, unless it's a bigger feature. But even then, they'll just compartmentalize. I have, you know, they'll keep the bit. On Ed Astro, we had probably 20 people in our edit suite at a time uh, working in the visual effects department, the sound department, the music editors. Uh, the editors, um, everybody. And now I think they would just say, all right, visual effects, you guys are over here. You guys get this wing of the building. Editorial, you stay here. Sound, you guys are gonna go over here. And it's gonna compartmentalize, but if you wanna get into editing, really it's only like three people that are, that most of the time make up an editing team for any of the mid-range or lower budget films, three to five people. And it's, um, or sometimes two people, depending on the film. But um, so it's still, it's, I think it still will have that opportunity to learn and to be mentored and to, to help you learn the process and to learn, meet the people and to continue to grow. Um, you know, hopefully this is a very short term thing, but um, even if that's not the case, I mean, I don't know what the best way is going to be. Um, if, if we are all compartmentalized, it is going to be difficult. It's going to, uh, you know, to be honest, it probably will be more difficult to, to learn the next process and the next step up. Or if it's a case where you're a PA and you want to become the assistant editor, maybe you can work with that assistant editor wherever they're located. That can kind of be your home base, uh, would be my suggestion so that you can learn that process first. And then you guys can, can grow from there. All right. Thank you. Sure. Hi, Lee. This is Rachel. I was um, just going to ask you about, I actually have had the opportunity to work as an editor um, in, in my previous position before I became an adjunct. And, you know, I just, I've been doing it longer than that, but I, I just love the, the art of editing. It's something I've always been really drawn to. And so I'm always interested to talk to other editors about it because I feel like it's one of those things that you don't get it unless you get it. Um, yeah. So I was very interested to hear about your comments on um, the very technical aspects of workflow, um, particularly with assistant editing. That's something I'm really trying to encourage my students to do because I will literally give them a folder structure at the beginning of every semester and say, put everything in here, like label everything. That's half the battle because then you're not gonna be able to find stuff. Um, but I guess I was kind of wondering if you had this is maybe a nerdier question, but no. if you had a very particular workflow or folder structure and, and perhaps, you know, I, I'm assuming you're using Avid, but you know, if you're using something like Premiere or something like that, I'm just kind of interested in like the nitty gritty of your, your workflow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, um, I do use Avid and I would say 99% of the editors out here do use Avid. Uh, it's an extremely powerful tool. Uh, for what I, for, I love Avid, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, I mean that's the other thing. I know a lot of schools have gone to Final Cut, and it's like it teach teach the kids Avid. Um, but the um, the technical side of things, the to get into the nitty gritty, it's 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 really um, you kind of learn as you go as you as you rise up through the ranks as a PA as an assistant, and you work with different editors. It's really important to learn what they like and what their folder structure is and then kind of either improve on what works best for you because there is no right or wrong answer it's whatever works best for you and um, I, every editor I worked with I've taken bits and pieces from and I've said oh I, I love that the way they organize their bins 
or I love that the way they organize the cuts or um, script sync is a huge avid tool and so many editors don't use it. And that is extremely powerful to it. I'm like, I don't know why everybody doesn't use this tool. And so like, as far as organizing go, um, a lot of times it's, it's just broken down by pretty much by department. It's, you have your cuts, you have your reels. We still work in reels because sound departments still work in reels, but you'll have bins for each reel. And then you have bins for each scene. And, um, and throughout that, then, then you'll have, as you get further down, you have a sound effects bin that you have a lot of temp sound effects that you use to work with and, and temp score. Temp score is very important um, when creating the first pass of the film and also your source keys. So really just break it down into each, each, um, each department is kind of the way I like to organize the folders. That way, if I'm working in something, my assistant can work in real two or real three, or he can work in, in, in pulling sound effects or he can work in pulling uh, music scores. And, and then that way I can have access to it when he's ready. And um, it's really, you, it really helps um, compartmentalize things a little bit so that when you have multiple people working on the same Avid system, people can work in different places at the same time. Um, it's kind of like with this, with script sync, the newest thing I went to was, uh, I used to have everything in one long script. So it had every single clip from the entire movie on this one bin, uh, pretty much is, is a script. And the last time I was like, well, why don't we just break it up into scenes with like the bins? And that way more, because script, script syncing is takes the most tedious work and that way multiple assistants can be script syncing different scenes at the same time. It just makes it more efficient. And then that way when they pick up shots or they add different shots to scenes, they can add more. They can do that in the background while you're working on other scenes. And it's just, um, it, organization is the, one of the number one things that helps editors became, become efficient. I never, I never want to say that I'm a, I'm a fast editor. I like to say that I, I'm an efficient editor <laughs> because it's a very important to know everything that you have and to, to be able to navigate faster is the efficient part instead of, instead of um, just having to search through every, every single clip for that one take that you know. You know like he said that one line one time, but with something like script sync, you can look at it and you go, oh, there it is right there, instead of listening to 10 takes. And little tricks like that will help you become more efficient. Uh, yeah, thank you. I love that distinction between fast and, and efficient. Um, and I've never heard of script sync. So uh, yeah. even though I have, the, I know Avid, I've never used that feature. So I'm definitely gonna look into that. <laughs> look into that. It's an, it's an amazing feature. It's, 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 it's not, a, not the script sync portion of it. It is a, um, doesn't work that much that well for scripted shows because um, the, the algorithm doesn't recognize the different takes and the different lines that it reads. It does have to do manually for the most part for each take when you do do it. So just a warning ahead of time, it won't, it won't magically work unless it's uh, something that has been transcribed like in a documentary, then it's an amazing tool. But it does take a lot of work ahead of time, but the, the ability to, the director goes, how many takes do I have of him saying that line? You can say you have five takes. And then you can go, can I hear all five? And you go, click, one, two, three, four, five. And it does just like that. And you can say, and he also said it just a little different right over here. And number, it's take number six, he said something different. And I, it's, just an, it's an amazing, just to be able to communicate faster, you get more work done. And, um, and you can, you can really compare them instead of having to drive through each clip and try and find out when he said it, or if he said it three times in that clip, it's an amazing tool. So definitely, definitely check that out. Great, thank you. Hi Lee, uh, I'm Harrison, I'm from Millersville. I'm kind of on the directing side of things um, it's, and kind of on the opposite of that question. Are there some things that you've noticed um, from directors or producers, uh, some, skills that you're like, oh, that makes my job easier, kind of? Uh, it's all about communication. It's all about being clear. And the, the more um, clearly you can describe what you're looking for, uh, the, the easier it is for us to interpret. And uh, when working with a director, you, it takes a little while, the first time you work with a director to figure out what exactly they want, or with the producers, what exactly they're looking for. Um, but as you get to shorthand with them, you get to understand their 
the way they like scenes edited and the way that they like to be on certain characters at certain times. Um, for example, uh, on a, with working with James Gray, he is all about point of view. And it is, if we don't know the character, main character's point of view in every single scene and throughout the entire scene, then we haven't done our job. And uh, there, I mean, there's a reason that Brad Pitt's on screen for 99% of that Astra. You know, it's in the same way with, um, if you look at all of his movies, that's one thing you will notice. So it's once you figure out that's the point of view, you got to figure out how to continue to, you know, that's just one example of where it took me a little while to get to, to realize how he likes to have his movies and scenes cut together. And a biggest thing that could benefit your, your, your work with an editor, your, um, is to have conversations beforehand. It really is. It's, it's to explain what you're trying to do, what you want to accomplish. Because when you're out shooting in production, we rare, rarely get to talk to the directors because they are so busy or producers. They're, they're just slammed. It's only if there's a problem that we get to speak with the director. But it, if you can talk to them beforehand, that'll help give them a guideline, you know, an outline of what you're looking for throughout the film. And, and then the, the other good thing is, as a director, um, you, get, you, get, you get to kind of let the editor look at it creatively in a different way as well. And I think that's very important. Uh, because everybody, everybody's minds work differently. Editors work very differently than <laughs> than a lot of people in the, in, the, in the industry, and and you know we have to solve this crazy puzzle. It's a, it's a million piece puzzle that is continually changing, and and all the pieces are white. So it's it's like it's 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 it, it'll never be perfect. It just never will be perfect. You have to understand that. But to 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 allow somebody to creatively change something or do something or to try a lot of different things, I think is one of the most beneficial things you can do because they will bring something to the table that you never would have thought of. And it'll be like, whoa, that is, it's amazing. And so many, so many times it's, it's, it, that has happened. It's like a lot of times I would, we would be working on a scene uh, with the other editor and James and I would just watch it and I'd be like, they, you know, we're working through a problem, trying to solve a problem. And, I'd be like, can I just go work on something in the other room? I just want to try something and see if it works. And I'll just leave. I won't tell him what it is. I don't want to give him that heads up. I don't want him to think. I don't want him to reject it in a way. But I also don't want them to, you know, just let us prove it first. Let us, let us edit something totally different. And that is a way that you can, you can let your creative process happen and let other people that are extremely creative um, contribute as well. Uh, I mean, that's the... I once heard Tarantino speak and he was talking about, he said a similar thing. He, when he was really scared to direct his first movie, he said, you know, how can I be the best at everything? And he said, you, you can't be the best at everything. You hire the best people in every department and they will make you look the best in every department. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you, you have to rely, you know, the director is the, the captain of the ship and you have to rely on those people and, and trust in them and, and, and guide them. And then you'll have the, you'll have an amazing time and a good product. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Lee, in our phone conversation, and you mentioned this very briefly. One thing that you said surprised you and surprised me as well in our conversation was uh, the fact that uh, that editors uh, work work with agents or or have agents. Um, can you do you want to add? anything to that fact yeah yeah i mean it was it, that was another thing coming out of college you don't realize that uh as most department heads the head of head of uh editorial cinematography uh writers you know art department everybody has agents and uh, once you get to a certain level uh i fortunately after dope dope was the first movie movie i ever edited by myself and because I got recognition for it and because the film did really well, I had multiple agents calling me saying, hey, I'd like to represent you. And that's, that's the, um, I feel like that's the ultimate goal of a film festival. It's kind of like, you know, you got to meet the people, you got to do your movie to do well. And most people at film festivals don't have agents, I would say, or they're just starting out mm. with agents, you know. So it was a huge opportunity for me. And I fortunately was able to, capitalize on that opportunity and hire an agent and I've worked with them 
for the last five years. And, and it's, it opens up a lot more doors. It really does. And they, they also take care of the negotiations. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to think of the politics and make feel like you're feeling bad for somebody because you're trying to get a couple hundred more dollars a week out of it. Your agent will be like, nope, that's what they need to pay you. And they'll take care of it. And so it, it really gives you that buffer so you can kind of stay friendly and kind and, and just stay positive about working with people. And there's no money and, you know, no money conversation. But having an agent is very important, I feel. It, it just gives you an open door into everything that's going on. And they, they help you meet more people uh, that are looking for editors. All right. Sounds good. Well, again, Lee Haugen, uh, based in LA. I hope your weather's better than than ours is is here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice out here now. Uh, it's it's been uh, been great to have you join us today. Thank you for your time and, and your you. efforts, and um, good luck as uh, in this changed world. Uh, enjoy your sons. Uh, yes, you're getting you're getting more time with them now than uh, than you got, normally have. Got to take advantage of it. Exactly. So that's great. Yeah. Um, very good. And thank you to, uh, to all who have uh, joined uh, us here today for, for this conversation. Uh, we, we certainly appreciate uh, everyone's uh, participation. And again, uh, thanks, thanks again to you, Lee. Um, no problem. Thank you very much. Right. Take care. Okay. Stay safe.